First at four, a local neighborhood on edge after a 13-year-old girl fights off a stranger. Why police need your help. Also ahead, desperation in Puerto Rico. Is the Trump administration really doing enough to get help to those in need? Paula? Sandra, we're hearing from more and more local families whose loved ones are trapped on the island of Puerto Rico. And I gotta tell you, one of the stories we heard today is absolutely chilling. We didn't quite do fall right last weekend. Mother Nature promises we're gonna get it straight. Plus, we're gonna look at a significant warm up next week. That's all right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Ali in for Karen Drew. First at 4, some scary moments for a 13-year-old girl when she's forced to fight off a stranger. She tells police it happened Thursday afternoon during rush hour. That girl was walking on St. Clair Drive in New Baltimore when a man approached her, asking her if she needed a ride. The girl said no, and that's when the man grabbed her. She then kicked him. She managed to get away. The teenager did not get much of a description, though, so police say this afternoon they do need your help. If you saw anything at all, they want to hear from you. While the head of the Michigan State Police will not be fired, she is still facing an internal investigation. Critics have said Colonel Christy Itsu needs to go after reposting a meme, a meme that was very critical of recent NFL protests involving the national anthem. The state police say she is under investigation, just like any employee, and if she violated policy, she could face a five-day suspension. We will definitely keep you posted. Police in Clinton Township investigating an early morning car crash. It happened around 8.30 this morning. It happened on Clinton River Road between Romeo Plank and 17 Mile. Both drivers had to be taken to the hospital. An 18-year-old has already been released, but we are being told a 46-year-old man from Sterling Heights has suffered severe injuries. Police say drugs or alcohol, they believe at this point, may have been involved. We'll keep you posted as we learn new details. And we have new information at this hour about a water main break in the city of Plymouth. The city says there's a clamp on the main right now between Mill Street and Hines Drive. Road closures in the area should be ending very soon, but drivers, they have been rerouted around Wilcox Lake all day, and officials say the water is now safe to drink. Last weekend was, of course, the first official weekend of fall, but it definitely didn't feel like it with temperatures in the 90s. This weekend, though, it's going to be very different. Ben Bailey has a sneak peek in the first forecast today. It's going to feel like fall, Ben. Yeah, it, last week was our starter weekend. We just kind of had to get our training wheels, and now this is what fall is going to feel like. By the way, those clouds that are out there right now uh, are going to produce some showers in a couple spots. We'll take a look at that in a second. What's most noticeable, though, are those winds. 22 miles an hour in Metro and gusting even higher than that. And we've got cool temperatures not too far from average in the mid to upper 60s, and this is a lot how the weekend is going to feel like. Four live radar still tracking at least a couple of these light showers. Most of them are in our north zone, but they'll be working their way down to the south for at least the next few hours. And then once we get close to sunset tonight, we'll clear out, dry out, and also see those winds relax. We'll be down to 52 by midnight. It's going to be a chilly night tonight. We'll look at those lows in your four zone forecast coming up. Sandra. Thank you, Ben. First and four, we're on top of stories making headlines across America, and we start in Wisconsin. That's where a plea deal has been reached in the so-called Slender Man case. One of the girls charged, Morgan Geyser, has pled guilty to avoid jail time and instead will now receive treatment for mental illness. In 2014, two 12-year-old girls in Wisconsin stabbed their classmate 19 times. They said it was to impress the horror character Slender Man. The deal calls for doctors to evaluate Geyser and then report to a judge how long they believe she should stay in a state mental hospital. We move now to South to Florida, where a 12th person who lived inside a Hollywood nursing home, that nursing home that lost power during Hurricane Irma, has died. More than 100 people were evacuated from the nursing home when three patients were found dead on September 13th after Hurricane Irma. Officials have not released the specific cause of death for any of the victims. The facility has been temporarily shut down. There's already been such a heated war of words between President Trump and North Korea's Kim Jong-un, and now we're getting a sobering assessment of where that country stands as it works to build nuclear weapons. Here's the director of the International Atomic Energy Agency. North Korea made a very rapid uh, progress, and um, uh, combined with uh, other, uh, other elements, uh, this is uh, the new threat, and uh, this is uh, the global uh, threat. 
North Korea carried out its sixth nuclear test earlier this month and declared it was a successful hydrogen bomb test. This is a big part of the crisis right now in Puerto Rico right here. Thousands of shipping containers that were packed with supplies. They have arrived in the main port of San Juan. However, because of a shortage of truck drivers, those shipments have not been able to get to families in need. Kimberly Gill has been following the crisis and also the debate over the Trump administration's response to all this. Kim? Yeah, hi, Sandra. Good afternoon to you. With millions of people still without power or safe water to drink, the mayor of San Juan was upset about recent comments from the Homeland Security Secretary. While Speaking yesterday, Secretary uh, Elaine Duke told reporters the federal government's response to Hurricane Maria has been, quote, a really good news story. It didn't take long for the mayor to fire her back. I am very satisfied. Um, I, I know it's a hard storm to recover from. But the this is not a good news story. This is a people are dying story. This is a life or death story. This is there's a truckload of stuff that cannot be taken to people's story. This is a story of a devastation that continues to worsen because people are not getting food and water. President Trump also spoke today about the government's response, defending criticism that his administration is not working fast enough to provide relief to the island. The police and truck drivers are very substantially gone. They're taking care of their families and largely unable to get involved, largely unable to help. Therefore, we're forced to bring in truck drivers, security, and many, many other personnel by the thousands, and we're bringing them onto the island as we speak. The president plans to visit Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands next week. We will, of course, uh, be covering that as well. Sandra, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Kimberly. And local families like the one you're about to see here are watching reports from Puerto Rico with heavy hearts. We have an update on their efforts to bring supplies to loved ones. And we're also hearing news stories about how devastated the island really is right now. Paula Tutman has been talking to several families. And Paula, what are they telling you? Well, first of all, Sandra, I can tell you that this might look like a national story, but we're finding out more and more. This is a local story. We have so many families here who have loved ones in this U.S. territory, the island of Puerto Rico. And I can tell you today, I spoke to one woman and what she's hearing from a remote area of the island where reporters haven't even gotten to yet is chilling. Broadcasting from Puerto Rico? Yes. Daisy spends her days two ways, watching live reports from Puerto Rico. The food been there from the previous hurricane that we got. It's been stationed in San Juan ports. And trying to reach members of her family who are stranded there. And then it's back to live coverage from reporters on the ground. People cannot be in the street at their certain hours. The cure from you. She received a call from her cousin last night. It wasn't good. She's out of food. Her two young children are starving. She wants to know if Daisy has heard anything about help coming. They are perishing in front of her very ears. That's when she can get through. The supplies are not being delivered. Where is the water being delivered? My uncle is in Fajardo. I was born there. He said they only give him two packs of rice. What little she is hearing, she's telling a horrifying story of suffering, that the death count on the news is not accurate because people are actually burying the decomposing remains of their loved ones themselves for fear of disease spreading in the heat. Her cousin tells her no one is coming to save them. No one is coming to get the bodies. People have to bury their own family members in their backyards and because they don't have a resource to take them to the hospitals. So they're not even being counted among the dead? No, they're being buried by their own family members. Also on the island right now, Guillermo and Gabby Flurkin, who've been communicating with me by cell phone and text message as signals allow. You'll remember that they left for Puerto Rico yesterday from their Ypsilanti home with 1,500 pounds of supplies, including four generators. They safely arrived yesterday afternoon to this. Sheer devastation, worse than they imagined. Today, they have been installing generators in their mother's neighborhood. 
Back in Southwest Detroit, however, what of Daisy's family? What of her country, which is part of this country, too? Isla del Encanto, enchanting island. But to see Puerto Rico like this is, this is not my island. Now, I, I do want to make clear that what Daisy is hearing, we have not been able to verify, but it is absolutely chilling if that is indeed the case, that families are having to bury loved ones in their own backyards because they're afraid of disease. Keep in mind that cameras and reporters have only gotten to small parts of the island. There are other areas. Uh, uh, Daisy's family is actually near a tropical forest or rainforest, and there haven't been any reporters. So the only information she's getting is very, very sporadic from quick phone calls when cell service is available. But even in that, what she's hearing is chilling to herself. Yeah, absolutely heartbreaking. Thank you so much, Paula. Still had disappointment for fans of the show, Sex in the City. Did backstage drama really kill the next movie? We'll talk about that. Also ahead, a new data breach at a popular grocery store. Which customers might be affected and who may have avoided the hackers? Plus, here's Doc. Hey, Sandra, you know no one wants to bring bed bugs into their home. So up next, the one thing you can do when you're on vacation that can help you avoid bed bugs. There's interesting results from new research. That's next. How clean. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. She's 89 years old. She's a nun, and she loves to run. What if you fall? Well, I have fallen a couple of times. I'm Ed Rod Casimir. Coming up, I'll introduce you to Sister Beth Wood as she's gearing up for her next half marathon. First at Four continues with a Help Me Hang consumer alert regarding a data breach at Whole Foods, the grocery store chain, now warning customers thieves stole credit card information at several of its stores. So you're most likely to be affected if you shopped at any of the stores, tap rooms, or full table service restaurants. Whole Foods saying the breach did not affect the main checkout lanes. However, Amazon just took over Whole Foods, but the hack did not spread to Amazon's payment server because at this point they're still not connected. As always, though, if you think you may have been affected, you want to keep a close eye on your credit card statements or even set those fraud alerts on your accounts as well. In good health today, biting, blood-sucking bed bugs can be unwelcome hitchhikers in your bag when you return home from a hotel stay, of course. Doc is here now with a new study on why they're so attracted to our luggage. This is kind of fun, actually. It is your dirty laundry, apparently, that wow. is doing it. And here's one of the reasons or ways that they found out. Researchers had people wear cotton clothing for three hours, and then they wore clothes, and then they took the worn clothes, rather, and put it in bags that were arranged in a circle with alternating bags of clean clothes. Well, when bed bugs were put in the middle of that circle, the bed bugs were more likely to move into the bags with dirty clothes than the bags that had clean clothes. Now, obviously, the best solution is going to be to separate your dirty clothes from your clean clothes and leave the dirties in a sealed bag until they can be laundered. But they're attracted to your dirty clothes. Yeah, either way, I'm just completely grossed out at this point. It's well, pretty gross. It's interesting bed bug But it's data. true, when yeah. you bring a lot of dirty laundry home from vacation, it makes perfect sense. Right? Exactly. That's yeah. why you need to throw it in the laundry machine right yeah. away. And another story that older people aren't maintaining their strength as much as they should, and that's contributing to more injuries later on in life. Exactly. In fact, one recent survey found that only about 25% of older adults over 65 exercise with any kind of regularity or frequency to maintain their strength. And that's really important because I'm not really even just talking about dedicated exercise. I'm talking about ordinary daily activities that can be helpful, like lifting groceries, working out in the yard, or doing housework like vacuuming. Because as we age, if we don't continue to stay modestly active, strength and balance quickly fall off, which in turn really increases the risk of falls and other ailments. And that's kind of the big message. You need to stay active as you get older. Yeah, so even a simple thing like just going for a walk or anything like that. That's exactly it. But maintaining activities of daily living, just cleaning your house, that yeah, helps. Simple things. All right. Thanks so much, Doc. Now let's go ahead and check in with Ben Bailey for an update on the weekend forecast. And Ben, it sounds like it's going to be like a perfect fall weekend. It's a lot different than what we uh, were used to last weekend, that's for sure. And we're just sort of settling into these cooler temperatures. And now we've got these winds that we have to deal with. Gust of 31 miles an hour right now uh, at Metro Airport. Most of the area, though, 20 to 25 mile an hour gust. 
We will see these start to relax as we get closer to sunset tonight and then be a little bit more calm as we wake up tomorrow morning. Temperatures a little bit uh, closer to average. We're at 67 right now at Metro upper 60s here across our south zone, ranging into the low 60s once you get north of M59. Uh, but the other thing that we are watching are the clouds and yes, some showers too. We've got that midday break uh, before a lot of or after a lot of us saw a couple of those morning showers. Everything's rotating around this low that sort of drug a, a trough of low pressure through here and you can see that those uh, showers starting to move down from the north North and West, so we will be seeing at least a hit and miss shower through the next few hours. But as the sun sets, that's going to take away a lot of the instability for these to work with. Most of us are going to dry out. Watch what's going to go on, though, closer to Lake Huron. As the winds come out of the north off the lake, there's going to be enough instability there. Lake enhancement uh, for those showers to at least go close to the lake shore through tonight and then early parts of Saturday. So if you're around Port Huron, uh, up towards Lexington, maybe uh, down into southern St. Clair County, watch out for just a shower uh, produced off the lake there for the, about the next 24 hours. But as the wind shift around late on Saturday in the evening hours, that should bring that to a close. Everybody's going to get chilly tonight. Wait till you see these low temperatures in your four zone forecast. These are some of the warmer numbers. 48 in the city. 47 is probably going to be our official low at the airport. And then you get further inland, and that's where those numbers are going to drop off even further. Barely hitting 40 degrees out in Onstead. Adrian Tecumseh will be at 42 as well. A good chunk of the south zone and warmer temperatures towards the lake. Holding on to the 40s, but barely here in our west zone. Low to mid 40s is what we're looking at here. And quite a spread in temperatures as the uh, lakes keeping things a little bit milder out here towards Lexington and Port Huron at 47. But could be seeing a 40 out there in Ortonville. Wouldn't be surprised if a couple spots sneak into the upper 30s, at least for about an hour or so. 64 is what we're looking at for a high temperature in the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine both Saturday and Sunday. And we start marching back up. Mid 70s show up here on Monday. We're going back to 80, believe it or not, on Wednesday. So most of next week, even though that's going to be October, well above average for this time of year. Sandra. All right, looking good. Thanks, Ben. Trending stories coming up next, including some big news today about sex in the city. And one of Hollywood's hottest men kicks off another season of Saturday Night Live. Also ahead today, fast food fashion. We're going to tell you about a surprising new partnership when First at Four continues. It's been in today's trending stories, Taco Bell moving away while well, moving from tacos to t-shirts. The fast food chain teaming up with the store Forever 21 to work on a fashion line. In fact, they just sent this video of just a few examples here. The line is going to feature hoodies, sweatshirts, jackets with those Taco Bell graphics as well. The line is going to be in stores and on the Forever 21 website starting October 11th. And so far, we haven't seen any information just yet on any pricing. I'd wear a Chalupa hoodie. I was just gonna say, now I know what I'm gonna get you for Christmas. <laughs> You're on my list. Please do. Die hard fans of Sex in the City, while well, they may be drowning their sorrows with Cosmos tonight, Sarah Jessica Parker confirming a third Sex in the City movie is dead. It is just not gonna happen. Rumors have been flying that Kim Cattrall made some crazy demands in order to do the movie. Now she denies those rumors, saying she just didn't wanna do the film and that she made that clear back in 2016. I Either way, this is a bummer. No more sex in the city. So a lot of people are also talking about this one today. Saturday Night Live, the legendary show returning for its 43rd season. That's coming up tomorrow night right here on Local 4. Actor Ryan Gosling is the first guest host with musical guest Jay-Z. Next week, it's Wonder Woman Gal Gadot and musical guest Sam Smith. SNL coming off a huge season, big ratings, and lots of Emmy Awards as well. Still ahead, oh baby, this family right here just welcomes a brand new addition, and they did something that happens very rarely. Why birthdays are going to be a really big deal in this house. Is homework a hassle in your home? Experts say parents could unintentionally be making matters worse. All those things that you say, right, that those, those kind of can backfire. Tonight at 11, how to end the homework drama and get the work done in record time. 
Finally today, it's time to see just why this family will never forget each other's birthdays. Take a look. Uh, this couple just gave birth to a new addition, baby Oliver on September 27th. That day already special to mom and dad. What makes it special is the fact that this couple already shared a birthday and now they share it with their new baby boy. Statisticians say the odds of mom, dad and baby all sharing the same birthday are about one in 133. Thousand scheduled C section, you think? No, <laughs> they really wouldn't, they wouldn't rig it. Would but they? think of the parties in that house, oh, yeah. that's awesome. It's gonna cost somebody some money, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mom and dad, super cute though. Thanks so much for joining us today. First at four, we're back in a half hour with local four news at five. Inside Edition is up next.